Let's bring out our first guest. Here's a funny man. Here's a very talented guy. He's never been, was not on this show, was not on the old show. We're very excited that he's uh, making his debut with us here this evening. From uh, Blues Brother to Ghostbuster to Conehead, our first guest has had some of the great comic roles on film. His latest movie is My Girl 2, and it opens on Friday. It's his first time here, so folks, please make him feel welcome. Dan Aykroyd. Dan, nice to see you. David. How are you? Pretty good. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thanks a lot. Of course, uh, we did do Carson once. Remember That's those right, days? back in like 86 or yeah. something, 87, yeah. You, me, Chevy Chase, and Johnny were there. That's correct, yeah. that's correct. You ever talk to John at all? I, I hear from him occasionally. Yeah, the drummer. Yeah. He's yeah. a drummer now. He spends a lot of time working in the yard. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's okay. Is, We're all headed that way. Is, <laughs> Some of us, anyway. You know, I've always, had, uh, for years and years, I've admired your work. I think you're one of the few people that really gets it right when they do it. You know? Well, thank you. Very much. <laughs> and I mentioned that you were supposed to be on the old show, mm -hmm. or but you weren't. Yeah. And this is your first time here. Is there a reason? Have you been avoiding us? Was there a problem? Uh, well, uh, there was uh, a ferry accident, uh, <laughs> and a lot of cars went in and the sound in Martha's Vineyard where I lived, and I had to help the Navy divers rescue <laughs> some of them. No, I, what happened there that day was I slept in, David. Uh -huh. I actually slept in. I was supposed to do the show. I was on Martha's Vineyard. I set the alarm, and it sort of you know, went off too late, and I woke up and realized I have to be in New York in an hour right. what, Dan, from a fog-bound island. Dan, what time did you wake up? Well, I was I was up at you know I'd set it for like noon and then I woke up at two and <laughs> it was one of those. But you know the last time. So you're just sleeping in, is what you say? <laughs> yeah, I slept in, and I felt like you know that it was kind of like coming to the teacher with a bad excuse. But now <laughs> Bill Murray, as you remember, came on the show and did make up for it because in fact he came on in the old uh, Peacock days, uh, and he drew blood from you. Oh, that's right. We all yes, became blood we have, brothers. Yeah. Well, you know, he asked me for a liver enzyme sample from you. <laughs> so uh, he said that, you know, that he's got the... Now, I've got the Monoject 1 or the Monoject 2 here. These are horse tranquilizer. Now, I don't know if you want to administer yourself You don't need to do this or... because I keep a supply of that in the icebox okay, well, backstage. Why don't we just... Uh, why don't we just uh, are we ready? Toss okay. them in the Hudson. Can sure, we? that's right. <laughs> okay, fine. Bill, we'll be... Uh... So, what else do you have in there? No, no enzyme sample. What do you uh, have no. in this bag? You, it looks well, like you're going to or coming from class. It's uh, it's kind of well. I got a few harps. I got some old Vaseline here. I got, All right. Uh, I'm sorry I balls. asked. I got. <laughs> I have. Uh, I brought you a book. Now I know that uh, <clears throat> you are one of the one of the great skeptics of our time. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, I brought you the definitive UFO Bible. Uh, this is by a gentleman, Timothy Thank Good. Thank you very much. It is uh, the compendium of all that we know about UFO the research. The worldwide UFO cover-up. That's yeah. right. All right, I'll leaf through this uh, tonight. Yeah. And um, uh, if you're in for... If... if uh, oh, oh, no, it's a no, joke. That might no. levitate. Yeah. You... But now, have you ever seen a, an unidentified flying object? I... Yeah, yeah. Paul Schaefer the other night at House of Blues. And now, there. wait a minute. Oh, hey, <laughs> That's hey, hey, hey. Get a I, band joke. Um, I saw something once in Massachusetts uh, that, uh, that three of us saw. We saw two objects tracking across the sky mm -hmm. at, at 100,000 feet that, doing maneuvers that, you know, F-18s wish they could do. So now, if you actually believe that they exist, and I'm not saying that they don't, but how come everybody hasn't seen them? Well, a lot of people have. I think if you look in the book, you'll see that there are a lot of photographs in there, a lot of military people, a lot of pilots, uh, a lot of people that are quite credible, a lot like, of cops. Like how many? A million? Have a million people seen UFOs? Uh, it's, it, it, there's there's like 80,000 80, really credible sightings that right. have been reported. You call me when you get to a million. Okay. All right. <laughs> Actually, last, last winter, it was just bone cold. It was like in, uh, about this time last bone winter. Bone cold. Yeah. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, and I thought I saw something. I looked out, and it caught my attention. And uh -huh. I looked across the way, and it was strange uh, lights, lights. Yeah. very low to the ground. And then later, I found out it was the neighbors back in the boat trailer in. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so there I you have it. Yeah, I, was, well, I felt stupid. this is the thing. Uh, <laughs> we need skeptics to look into these, uh, these questions. But I do recommend Mr. Good's writing. He is the, uh, the authority on it. It might stimulate your uh, Are you one there. of these guys who has been uh, abducted and examined by those? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a fun <laughs> night, believe me. <laughs> hey, you know who Oh, they here? touched me. I throttled those little suckers. <laughs> You know who was on the show last night? Blues Traveler. Oh, excellent. John Popper. Yeah, he's something. Gave me this harmonica to give to you. Really? Yes. Oh, now, I'm honored. now, uh -huh. is there. <laughs> is there anything you can do with that for us? Do you have I a little could. song prepared? Well, well, certainly. John Popper, of course, Blues Traveler, as you saw, he's one of the great harmonic players of our time. And it's Absolutely. so great that young talent is coming yeah. up and playing the blues. We have a. Worldwide chain now opening, a House of Blues. We have an outlet in New Orleans and Cambridge. We're going to New York, L.A. We're opening a club, and uh, we're very excited about it. It's keeping blues alive. And our director of musicology is Dr. Paul Schaefer for yeah. the Institute. Thank you so Institute. much. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, Thank you very uh, much. You have, you have all the money, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> He's the money. He's the money. All right. Well, we'll do this little transition here, and I'll do you, become... Now, are you uh, going to use this one, or you got your own? Well, that's a B. I've got an A for this. Oh, well, maybe I got an A. Is this an A over here? I got an A here that. Uh, what word does it say? This was just uh, came in by Snowmobile. Uh huh. From. Uh, this one from says 48. Mattel. Is that anything? Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> that's the. Uh, that was from the, the, the military version. All right, knock well, us out with something. All right, my friend. All right. Stand up for us. very impressive you can you can really do that you're not just goofing around well uh, a little help you know you got uh, the best in the world behind you they're Kinda great kicks us around the world. CBS yeah. Orchestra. Yeah. but he can't really and do you, that. you for for a large man you move really well that, I think uh, I think that's part of the bonus you know <laughs> when a man you know pushing uh, two in the deuce you know it's uh, <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, that's what it is. That's you you is. and I think Paul, Paul went down to uh, New Orleans for the opening of this uh, House, House of Blues, of Blues yeah. right? Is that when you had uh, the trouble with the law? Was there an encounter where you were pulled? Well, with... yeah, this is going to be a great story. I just love telling it because I hope the officers who stopped me are watching because <laughs> it's kind of fun. What are we, uh, I travel with a, <laughs> now, I be travel with a, with a motorcade uh, of, of motorcycles. <laughs> and we have a support. Now, why is that? Well, we were just riding around. In Louisiana, after we'd opened the club and having a little fun, you know, and uh, I was riding through the rain, and it was, you know, a transport truck passed me, and it was like just sheets of water, and I thought, well, I could push on and be a little more macho and ride through the night, but no, I want to live another. So I pulled over. We were parking our bikes, putting them up on this trailer we carry in case weather gets bad, and <laughs> we're kind of, you know, Harleys are wonderful. But they love riding in pickup trucks. <laughs> you know, it's like that American thing. Yeah. I don't know, it's just to help your Harley along. So we were loading the Harleys, and I'm sitting in, in my truck just about to pull out, and I look, and this police car comes whipping in like this, and two guys get out. And this is in Point Coupe, Louisiana. <laughs> and these guys are obviously dads, you know, in uniform, though. And one of them had a parasol, oh. you know. And he gets out, <laughs> okay, what's going on? <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> yeah. 
Who's beer dad? Who's beer dad? Uh, and there was this orphan six pack that uh, no one wanted to have anything to do with yeah. all of a sudden. Probably sort of. just came so, with a yeah, truck. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's beer dad? Dad, you, dad, you beer? My friend X-Ray says, no, sir, I was drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> and the officer goes, where'd the can? Where'd the can? And uh, he says, I threw it away in front of you, sir. Well, people tell lies. People tell lies. <laughs> people do tell lies. I do let them get the story. I guess this is nobody's beer, huh? Nobody's beer. Hmm. Okay, mind if I pour this beer out? Anybody mind? He was looking around, and of course, oh, no, we don't mind at all. <laughs> okay. And he looks around. We're standing in front of a post office. He looks at us. He goes, okay, y'all on federal property. Let's roll them out. <laughs> roll them out. And then he gets in his car, and before he goes, he goes, be careful, y'all. Take care now. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> It was beautiful. Just beautiful. And the other guy we have to mention tonight is an officer with the Lafayette Motorcycle Corps. His name is Dale Patton. He stopped us. And uh, he would, couldn't have been more courteous. Uh -huh. He is a king among, among officers, I must say. But the story around Lafayette is that he is so conscientious that he actually gave his wife a ticket. <laughs> I would just like to tell my own little story. I've been stopped many, many times <laughs> by the men and women who enforce the rules and laws of our highways, and never once have they been anything but completely polite, courteous, and gentlemen. Yes, that's true. I have true. just a, a warm, warm feeling for everyone out there patrolling our highways tonight. So do I. <laughs> so you're traveling around the country with several bikes and a guy named X-Ray. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you find it odd that you're stopped by the police. I wondered. <laughs> I wondered. No, I love him. I love my encounters with the police. My grandfather was a Royal Canadian Mounted Policeman. Well, there you go. One of my best friends is an ex-Metro uh, Policeman from Toronto who accompanies me as uh, on security right, detail. So and behave yourself. I've got two guys with me tonight from the NYPD, hardworking officers, and I really do respect <laughs> them and I love them dearly. <laughs> I would really it's like to know more about blues, your day-to-day -day life. You know, this, just, is, this impression it's, it's, I'm getting yeah. is very peculiar. It's the blues, it's Harleys, it's cops, and somewhere in there, there's a beautiful wife named Donna and two spectacular children, Danielle and Good Belle. Good for you. And, Speaking uh, of children, let's, let's mention the movie, My Girl 2. Absolutely. Uh, now, which opens uh, Friday, did I have that right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Now, this was a, a film that was extremely popular, the first one, and... That was so My Girl 1. My Girl 1. The powers that be <laughs> decided that uh, another one should, uh, should be made, and I think the reason I'm here tonight is, is really to support the career of uh, an up-and-coming star, Anna Klumski. I must say, she She's is here. terrific Can actress. she come out? Ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, here's uh, Dan's uh, co-star, uh, Anna uh, Klumski. Uh, Anna Klumski. Uh, Anna. that I'm so excited that you're playing, you know, Beatles songs because, you know, I'm just Good. such a Beatles fan. It's not even funny. And it's just, and, um... Anna, have you ever been hassled by the cops? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen a UFO? Um, <laughs> no, actually, um... No, I, uh, I've thought about it, though, before. D is Dan fun to work with? Does he take care of it? Does he look after you? Actually, you know, he's, he's pretty mean to me. He's, no. Uh, he's, yeah, he, he, uh, he, you know, always, he would never talk to me on the set, you know. He was just, you know, you know, of course, the I'm pins, kidding. Remember, but... I stuck pins in you oh, once. Yes. Now, yeah, kids, that. let's don't that. get carried away. Are you happy with the, the second film? Um, yes, I am. It, it's is, not, is it better than the first really one? Nice. Um, I wouldn't say that. I like, I like both, both yeah. films really a lot. So. Is it going to be a blockbuster? We'll see. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Anna. Thank you very much for coming. I know see you and Dan have to get on your bikes and blow out of here. Yeah, right. Let's get Dan, a pleasure to have you here. Dan Ackward, ladies and gentlemen. Anna Kinsky.